Welcome back to the Clive Barker Podcast. This is episode 131 uh, with Ryan and Jose catching up, going over some Hellraiser news, and you can develop a movie with Clive Barker. Uh, all this plus a Kickstarter update. Uh, check it out. Buy some cool stuff and help us in the process. Find us on kickstarter.com and searching for the Clive Barker Podcast Presents Fundraiser for Blood Money. What have, what have I been do, watching? Oh, I know. I've been watching Star Wars The Clone Wars, the TV series. I just finished it. It's like six seasons of it. Oh, okay. I, I've never seen... I think I might have seen a few episodes of season one, actually. Of uh... It gets... It gets a lot better as it goes along, and there's one um, there's one thing that I, w- I always wondered about Order 66, if that was, like, some secret that they had with the clones or if it was hardwired into their brains, and it turns out it was, a, uh, it was like an organic chip in their oh. brains that, that, switched, that were switched on. Wasn't there, like, a character from the Clone Wars um, – what's the name of the TV show again, Clone Wars? Yeah, the Clone Wars. Okay. Isn't there like a, uh, the character from the f- um, Rogue One, like played by uh, Yes, um, Forrest yeah. Whitaker? He's from the the cartoon <clears throat> show, right? Yeah, I didn't know that until uh, until just a few days ago. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I need to get into that. I mean, I, I'm I've always been a big like Star Wars and Star Trek fan. Uh, blasphemy, but uh, you have to like one or the other. You can't like both of them. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, I never really got into the cartoon, to be honest. Mm. But, yeah. It fills in a lot of gaps. Because there's a lot of room for uh, for them to come up with stuff about yeah. the Clone Wars and all that. I have I have been trying to get into the Arrow Hellraiser Scarlet box. So far, I've, I've looked at the, uh, the, the discs. It looks pretty sharp and cool on the TV. Uh, it's the clearest I've ever seen Hellraiser look. And... Uh, the, the, the first one, though, is really grainy. Um, have, have you noticed that? Have you watched it yet? No, I haven't. I haven't. I mean, I turned it on a little bit on on uh, my my mom's 4K TV that she got at Christmas time. Ooh. But then I haven't put it on. I just have a regular, you know, 1080p HD TV. So I figured it would probably look really similar to the Blu-ray. Mm. I, I I think it looks crisper and, and has a lot oh, more really? film grain that you can see on the first one. So, oh, cool. That's pretty cool. I haven't gotten into the extra materials yet, but I, uh, I'm hoping that this weekend I'll be able to do that and read some of that book that Phil and Sarah added to it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't gotten into any of that stuff at all since I got back, back home after Christmas. Mm, yeah. I've been meaning to, but I just uh, – we're going to be canceling Netflix pretty soon, and so I wanted to get through all the Clone Wars before that happened. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, nothing like binge-watching. <laughs> yeah. Apart from that, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm going to be seeing that uh, uh, TV show, The Expanse, season two started yesterday. But they, they placed it at like 11 o'clock, and it was like a two-hour special, I think. Oh, so wow. it's like, yeah, I want to see it. But, you know, Sarah Sarah was like, it's too late for me. you know. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of late. I mean, I don't feel like watching it at, from 11 to 1 in the morning. So we DVR'd it, and we're going to watch it tonight. So that, that should be cool. I like the first season a lot. I've been seeing commercials for it, but I've never seen it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. We also got the first uh, the first book, but we haven't gone through it yet. Because mm. the, the first season, you know, it's not the first book. It's just a part of the first book, so we don't want to spoil ourselves on the TV show. Right, right. But hey, should we go into the Clive Barker news? Um, well, I guess yes. But um, so I guess starting up, uh, starting out, our we our Kickstarter. So we are right now at uh, 1648. So of course we've reached our goal, but um, and all of the stretch goals that we came up with. But um, there, we still, you know, we're still looking for T-shirt orders um, right now. I mean, with the number that we've got ordered, <clears throat> that the T-shirts that we're going to be selling will be really expensive because the more you order, the cheaper they get. So. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like everything, like the book and the T-shirts. Uh, yeah. So we're, yes. we need to push on that one a little bit and see if people are more willing to uh, to get something physical for their uh, support of the podcast. Uh, we put a lot of hours of work into this stuff, and you know, we try to make a good product. So we try to make yeah. a good product, and uh, the T-shirt looks pretty cool. I think uh, I'm going to want a couple of those for myself. Yeah. Yeah, me too. 
and we're also sort of in the doldrums. I mean, in uh, Kickstarter, historically, it's really big in the beginning, and then like nothing happens in the middle, which is where we're at right now, and then uh, and then it'll pick up again at the end. It, at least that was that was our experience last year, and that's I hear that a lot about uh, Kickstarters in general. Sure. I mean, those people, you can do all sorts of pledges and remember that uh, all our backers will get a, an e-book copy of the interview book when it's done. And um, so it's going to be a lot of hours of interviews to sift through and transcribe, but we're working on it. We're, you know, I'm working on the Nicholas Vince episode 11 and it's taking forever. I got to get started on some of those too. Yeah. This one is going to be more to, geared towards Occupy Midian and Nightbreed. Yeah. So that's that's the one that we're going to open up with because that was a big part of the uh, the first year of the Clyde Barker podcast. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, that 2012 was really exciting. I think it like episode eight. We just you know we just happened to be there for the beginning of of Occupy Midian and and, uh, and it, it uh, sort of shaped our our next couple of years. 2012, yeah. 2013. A lot of our interviews ended up becoming interviews with people like Hugh Ross and Bobby. Um, yeah. You know, people related to Nightbreed, um, Russell Charrington. Catherine Chevalier, which is a pretty rare interview. I don't know that anyone else has interviewed her for anything. It might be the only time that she was interviewed about her role in Nightbreed that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was and, pretty cool. And Christine McCorkendale, who played Shuna Sassy as well. Yeah. Uh, and Russell Charrington, Mark Miller. Yep, Jim um, Johnson, who was editing the Cabal Cut along with Russell. So yeah, uh, a lot of stuff to go by, and we, we're going to um, obviously because the interviews usually take more than an hour. Um, sometimes, yeah, sometimes an hour and a half, I guess. Um, yeah. If we wanted to transcribe everything and put them like chronologically and 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 unabridged, that would become an enormous v volume. Mm -hmm. You know, we want you to go and listen to us on iTunes and on yeah. Google Play and on, you know, all the other outlets that we're in because listening to our podcast gives us more numbers and it makes us more relevant. So we don't want to be like, hey, here are all, all the interviews. Now you don't have to go listen to the episodes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and, and, and also there, you know, there's a lot of talking about like upcoming projects that they're working on and maybe, maybe things that have come and gone and, um, you know, and aren't related to Nightbreed. So we're going to kind of, uh, we're going to, we're going to be kind of putting a focus on the, on the, what, what's in the interview books. Yeah. So for example, let's say Nicholas Vince talked to us on his interview about his writing, uh, Nightbreed, playing Kinski, and for example, playing Chatterer in Hellraiser. The sections that he's talking about Nightbreed and stuff like that, they would go on this first volume, uh, along with maybe a few personal, like, intros and stuff that we were talking about their career and whatever. And and then we'll save some of the other material from those interviews to put in the next volume, which would be probably something about more focused on Hellraiser. You would have more yeah. like uh, Simon Banford, uh, Barbie Wilde, uh, Nicholas Vince. So with the interview books, we've sold 10 so far. And of course we're going to be giving them away, giving some away to the to people we interviewed and, and, uh, you know, some for ourselves, but, uh, you know, you can order as many of those as you want. You can stack them up to the ceiling in your house. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So, Please do that. Yeah. They're great yeah. door stoppers and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, we haven't actually seen what one's going to look like yet, but we hope they'll be make a good door stop. Yeah, that, that, at least <laughs> you know that we got in touch with Seraphin and they were kind enough to, yeah. to ask Clyde Barker and, and he supplied like, um, uh, uh, a particular piece, a black and white ink piece, um, and it's, uh, it's supposed to be Lude's father. It's the yeah. Lude from Nightbreed. I don't think anyone's seen that one before, other than us and and the people at Seraphim. So yeah, yeah. so that's that's nice. It's going to be exclusive. It's Nightbreed related, um, and you know it'll make a nice black and white uh, wraparound cover for the yeah. for the book. And it's going to be a hard cover. So uh, please buy some more of these books because. It's it's the first time we're doing something of the sort, and um, we're really excited about it. And I think this is going to be a pretty entertaining book. Going back into the interviews, you you relive those moments where you were talking to these actors, and it's it's fantastic. It's some stuff there, I'm pretty sure I've never read before in any interview with. <clears throat> For example, there was that um, 
episode 11 again, Nicholas Vince, he's telling us about uh, being in school with Simon Banford, and uh, he was a punk rocker at the time, Simon. Yeah. And he had uh, bright pink hair, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So stuff like that. That is cool. Yeah, stuff like that is really, really interesting. You know – this is not this is not exactly related, but I guess to the Kickstarter. And something no people don't really tell you when you do a Kickstarter, just for people who haven't done this before. For every one message that you get uh, about something you know related to your Kickstarter, or people asking, "Hey, can you combine these two things or whatever?" You get six or seven messages from services that want to help, like buy you tweets or you know buy, or buy you twitter likes or yes or twitter followers or people who want to uh to help promote your kickstarter for you and oh, and yes. uh yeah and it's not just like they're not just spammers either because they they uh my kickstarter email is different from the email i have on the website and i'm getting emails to both from both in both of those mm-hmm. so they're looking me up on Google also and emailing me. A lot of things that we think are people on the internet are actually bots just going around and trying to do some yeah. work for them. Uh, and some of them involve, you know, retweeting your campaign and stuff like that. Hey, we can yeah. get you. But you don't even know if you're getting organic actual people looking at your stuff. It's Or if it's yeah. just like more bots that they're just throwing your way and be like, hey, look at that. We got an extra 10,000 views. But it's like yeah. it's not really like people. It's just like bots. Yeah. Oh, and there are some, um, there, there were at least two of them now where they asked us to contribute to their Kickstarter and then they promised they'll contribute to ours, which seems like a really cool and novel Kickstarter. That's what it's like. They don't actually say anything specific about ours. They're just like, Hey, I saw your Kickstarter. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So other, other, other ideas that we have about the book and we're still discussing this, I guess, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, maybe we can have like uh, the book divided in a few ways. Like like Ryan, you came up with an idea. It would be like uh, the theatrical experience, and then there would be Occupy Midian and the fan movement, and then the director's cut and the future of Night. Yeah. So that's a good. I think that's a good structure for this first volume because there's definitely interviews that will fall into each of these categories. We can also add a few uh, small essays. Uh, from each of us uh, describing our trajectory and our recollections from the Occupy Media movement. Yeah, it's it's exciting putting all of this together and just seeing what we can get. Um, I think there will be some stuff that will be a surprise. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, sometimes people think that, um, that, okay, you already hit your mark, you already hit, like, the $500, your goal, and now this is this is done. But actually... The more money we get, the more money we're going to have to spend on rewards. Um, it's it's it it seems like it seems like it shouldn't be that way, but it is because of course there's always yeah. starter fees that always come up to close to like thirty percent of the total. And we put kind of a joke about that in the video because um, where where Sarah had said that um, hey you got fourteen hundred dollars that last year that should cover you for the next fourteen years. Yeah. But in all, in all honesty, the expenses go way up the more you make. So also, Libsyn is always like in, increasing like the rates and stuff, and we're always getting you know we're always getting more expenses uh, as the episodes pile up in terms of hosting and then bandwidth. So yeah, but we, you know we're getting there. You've been putting some uh, classic episodes back into the feed uh, that we had taken out because we didn't have room for them. Yeah. So. Right, right, yeah. On the old, uh, the old Potomatic, we they they gave us a cap of a total cap of how much we could have in there. Mm-hmm. But under Libsyn, it's unlimited, but you can only put in 250 megabytes a month. So it's like at the end of the month, whenever I see that we have some extra space and we're not going to be doing another episode, then I try to cram in as many of those as I can. Yeah. Usually, it's like one or two that I can fit in there. That hosting plan is going to go up, so the amount we can put in at a time is going to go up uh starting in in um once we once we take on this this uh app because mm-hmm. we the, the, to to have an app you have to you have to upgrade your plan anyway sure so that's a little a little inside baseball i guess but it's cool i'm excited about it i'm excited about the app i'm excited about the book and i'm excited about the t-shirt just because i want one yeah absolutely it's going to be sand color though Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. I've got like a 100 black T-shirts. Yeah. In fact, I'm wearing one right now. 
like I said, the more stretch goals you get, the less margin of error you have, and, yeah. and the more you have to fulfill. Mm-hmm. And it was nice to it was nice to make a goal that's a big one big project instead of a hundred little projects like what we did last year. I mean, I I'm happy with last year, but uh, we kind of overextended ourselves a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, a little bit. We still have to deliver a few more things, but we're working on them. Yeah. And now there's only two of us because, of course, on the site you probably can read the article that I wrote um, about Rob leaving the podcast. And yeah. we talked about this on a couple episodes ago and, you know, go read it. And I think Rob retweeted it on his Twitter because he doesn't have a Facebook anymore, but he still, he still follows our uh, BarkerCast uh, Twitter account and he keeps retweeting stuff yeah. from there and supporting us. Love you, Rob. Yeah. It, it's sad to see him go, but I totally understand, you know, if he's, he's trying to, to rearrange things in his life and, and um, make more time for, for uh, things that are, more productive towards, you know, getting his life going in the direction that he wants. So Yeah, so at, at the time, we we may not have as many uh, articles on the blog as we used to, but, you know, we've been trying to pick up the slack a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm trying to keep up with the news as much as possible. Sure, um, sure. It, it's a little easy because there's all, there's not, I mean, it's been a kind of a slow news time for, for Clive Barker stuff. Um, I, maybe they're building up towards some stuff. Yeah, a lot of exciting things are coming up. Yeah, yeah, like like Hellraiser anthology and stuff like that. Yeah, in the news, uh, Hellraiser Judgment. <laughs> this, the, you know, we have to take this with a little bit of a grain of salt, but uh, it was broken by Paul T. Taylor, and he um, he says that Hellraiser Judgment may have a legitimate theatrical release. And his exact quote was. I've been out of my pinhead lately and have neglected to post anything about my upcoming appearance as pinhead. But I have learned recently that Hellraiser Judgment might be getting not the typical straight-to-video treatment, but genuine th- theatrical release. I still don't have a definite date for the release, but previously announced March 28th date was premature, and I should have known better than to trust IMDB for confirmation information. Lesson learned. But when the trailer comes out and you finally see the poster, watch out. Yeah, I think this is interesting because Paul T. Taylor is playing Pinhead and uh, the date, March 28th, I think, didn't that come out from actually Gary Tunnicliffe, who is the director and the writer of the movie? Yeah, that's what I thought. They're trying to, to backtrack a little bit and be like, oh, well, that was from IMDb, it was premature, but I'm pretty sure, I, I need to check, but I'm pretty sure that this was from an announcement from Gary Tunnicliffe. Yeah. You know how these things are. Also, I'm, I'm interesting that he says that uh, Judgment is not going to get the typical straight-to-video treatment but get a genuine theatrical release. Well, of course. I mean, this movie is a contractual obligation sequel, uh, and yeah. it has to have, I think, uh, a, a theatrical release to, to count, you know. He may not understand the the what happened with the last one, right. you know, that they just did a, a cast and crew screening um, yeah, it's, and that was it. And then it went to Blu-ray and DVD after that. Sure. I think he may not be fully aware of the contractual obligations that are involved with this sequel. Yeah. Anyway, so it seems like it's not going to be March 28th. It's probably going to be somewhere else, like April, maybe June. Who knows? Wow. If it's had enough work put into it that it can get a like a wide, you know, a wide theatrical release, that would be that would be amazing. I don't think that there's any of us that are like tripping over ourselves to to go see this movie because mm-hmm. I think we all kind of feel like, well, let's just see what happens. Well, I don't know what sort of distribution uh, this is going to have. I, I believe that the previous one was had a theatrical release, but it was very, very limited. Like just a few, like. I've heard one cinema, but I think it might have been more like a handful. Oh, really? Of I thought it was only the cast and crew one. Okay, well, that might have been just it. Yeah. You know, I mean, when they say theatrical release, if you're just fulfilling a contractual obligation, you don't have to have like a wide theatrical release. Yeah. It's like when they got uh, Midnight Meat Train and they dumped it on dollar theaters. Yeah. You know, just because it was written that they had to do do a theatrical release. Yeah. I'm gonna hold on to my opinion about this until I see it. Yeah. But I wouldn't put I wouldn't put my hands on fire for this. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, and uh, 
Speaking of Hellraiser, there's a short film um, called The Offer, and it's kind of the, the cast is basically a bunch of Hellbound um, a- actors. So it's got uh, Simon Bamford, Nicholas Vince, Barbie Wilde, uh, and Kenneth Cranham. It's not as, as big of a coincidence as you might think because it's also put together by the same people who did the Leviathan documentary. So, of course, you know, they yes, know all these yes. people. They liked, you know, they liked working with them and they want to work with them again. It makes sense. Right. They did Leviathan. They did Fright Night, the documentary. Now they're working on RoboDoc, a documentary about RoboCop. And it's just a fantastic team of documentary makers. They said, and this was actually sent to us by Danny Stewart, one of our friends and Facebook contributor. <laughs> he plays the gimp in this <laughs> yeah. movie, apparently. Yeah. So, Hellraiser fans, check out our new 30-minute horror short, Shooting in April, featuring Hellraiser alumni Simon Banford, Nicholas Wins, Barbie Wilde, Kent Cranham, and with makeup effects by Stuart Conran from Hellraiser Hellbound. Please like and share. So, it's going to be a 30-minute movie, and the synopsis is that seven strangers are invited to a house to be offered a large inheritance, and instead they find themselves trapped in a deadly game to the death. Yes, this sounds very, very nice indeed. And it's directed by Chris Griffiths and Gary Smart of Leviathan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. That's That sounds a little scary. Yeah, it <laughs> sounds almost like a, like a Hellraiser version of Tarantino's uh, The Hateful Eight. Oh, I haven't <laughs> seen that one yet. I've been meaning to watch that. Okay. But yes, so it says uh, they have they have a poster, a painted poster and everything. So uh, Seven Strangers, an offer too good to be true. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> the, the next one, Clive Barker is partnering with um, Gr- Project Greenlight and Shudder uh, to do a horror film uh, contest. Yeah, so submissions for this are going to open on February 13th where you can send your pitch for a movie. And then they're going to vote on the winner with a judging panel and the audience. And the, the prize is going to be a $300,000 budget uh, and mentorship from Clive throughout the production. But I think, from what I understand here, um, they're going to go through the contestants until they reach a final number of contestants, and then those contestants are going to work together into a movie, right? Uh, I think that you, the first part is you put in, like, one- to three-minute pitch, and then from those, they're going to pick five finalists out of the pitches. And then those mm-hmm. five finalists each get to make a scene, uh, like a, a scene from their movie, and then, and then, oh, so then there's going to be judging again, and then that person wins the three hundred thousand dollar budget and getting to work, uh, you know, with Clive Barker as a producer. So if you know if you know what a pitch is, it's something that you can. It, it, usually, they used to call this an elevator pitch because you, if you found yourself in an elevator, say with Elon Musk or you know, <laughs> Jeff Bezos or you know uh, Tim Cook, you have to be able to just in one to three minutes, you have to be able to say what your project's going to be about. Uh, how you plan to do it, you have to pitch it. Yeah. So pitches should be about one to three minutes, and you can upload those to projectgreenlight.com. Start, starting on February 13th through March 17th. So you'll have a little bit, a little over a month to get those in. So this is just brand new, uh, brand new news. And in fact, I just discovered uh, this morning that, uh, that there's a Craigslist ad in the, in the, in Los Angeles where they're asking for extras so that they can so that they can make a promo for this contest. Cool. They're probably gonna want some extras to be in the audience. Yeah. Time. Yeah. So that's cool. All right. So that's another interesting thing that's putting Clive Barker's name back on the map, which is always a nice thing. And this next one you added. This is um... Barbie Wild said on her official page. Looks like exciting news are coming from Barbie Wild tomorrow. Stay tuned. And she put a little smiley face with the demon. You know, I don't know what it's going to be about, but I, I would be excited if it was another book of, like, short stories or another novel from Barbie oh, Wilde yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Her last book was Voices of the Damned. Before that, there was uh, the, her novel, The Venus Complex. I wonder if it'll be a sequel to The Venus Complex. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. yeah I would love that. But I guess we'll find out tomorrow. This was put up four hours ago. So let's stay tuned for yeah. that. And I shared another thing from uh, Nicholas Vince's uh, feed. Uh, he published this yesterday. <clears throat> he was saying, are you ready? And he posted a link to TerrorCon, which is going to take place on February 26th and 27th at the Rhode Island Convention Center. They're, they're going to have Nicholas Vince, I think Simon Banford. Barbie Wilde is on, the, is on that picture too. 
So it seems like it's going to be a mini Hellraiser reunion at TerraCon at Rhode Island. Cool. If you live in that area, you might want to get your tickets quickly. Neat. Yeah, that, I haven't been to that one. The thing is, we've been discussing a few format changes for our show uh, to become weekly, mm -hmm. like alternating between a news episode and a, a more in-depth topic episode or interview or even a feature like an audio commentary. Let us know if you'd like a weekly drop like this yeah. on iTunes and Google. So this is kind of an experiment at this point, but but uh, we'd like to see what you right. think of it. Sometimes in the in the early days, we had episodes that would get to like two hours and forty five minutes, and and uh, you know if this ends if this one ends up being more like half an hour, is that too short? You know, let us know what you think. So this format has advantages. I mean, if we're spending more time editing a topic episode, we can upload a news episode while we're working on the next. Yeah. And if there's date-sensitive news, which sometimes happens, like this, you know, like, oh, there's an exhibit that takes place this weekend. And sometimes we, we are saying that and we realize, oh, shucks, this is going to actually be put up after it closes. Or, you know, we could just, uh, we could just release those without rushing a topic episode. Yeah. And it takes, a, it takes time to read a book. <laughs> yes, it does. And we don't like to keep interviews or topic episodes in the can, uh, so to speak, but it would be nice to have a certain backlog that we could tap into and prepare things with a little more time. Yeah. Let us know what you think about getting a weekly dose of uh, the Barker cast uh, every week on your iTunes. I think sort of half joking, I think I would put like if we made $150,000 on our Kickstarter last year that we would go weekly. I mean, I, I think it was 200. Oh, was it 200,000? Yeah. I think it started with. A but that was guy. divided yeah. amongst three people. But <laughs> Yes. And obviously it would be uh, all topic episodes weekly, yeah. which would be really, really hard to it do. Would be, it would be our full time we, job at that point. Yeah. If we would each get, you know, $70,000, then yes, I would totally do that. I would yeah. read a book in a week yeah. and <laughs> make an episode. Yeah, that sounds like a dream job. We would run out of episodes really quick, though. But yeah. And who knows? Maybe next year we can try to uh, push for other ideas. Like, I would love to be able for us, the two of us, to make an episode together, you know, on camera. That would be something. Oh, yeah. Fun. Yeah, that would be fun. Because we, we've been together a couple of times, but, you know, it's it's never been that... that uh, we live too far apart from yeah. each other. So I was thinking about that when we were making our Kickstarter video, like how much better it would be if we could just be hanging out together, you know, doing that one. I mean I like what I like what we did, but it's like it's like, yeah, financially it just doesn't make any sense to you know, to do that, but I, I hope one day we can open up the episode saying live from Seraphin Film yeah, Studios, yeah. it's the Barker Cast yeah. show. <laughs> Be but you know, one 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 thing we really appreciate. I do want to say for you know going back to the Kickstarter, we do really appreciate all the support that we get, and we appreciate all of our listeners too because we're always coming up with new ideas and new cool things that we want to try. I mean, we've even this Kickstarter is not even over, and we've been talking about things that we may want to try next year or maybe for a separate Kickstarter that's not part of the fundraiser. And you know, it's it's just fun to to uh, to to just keep going and and uh, to be able to. Yeah, so for this news episode, I think this is it. Um, is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, nope, just uh, in this podcast, having no beginning will have no end. There you go. All right, guys. Up next, we're going to be doing a commentary track for Hicklesdale, so stay tuned for that one. Yeah. You can find the show notes for this page and lots of Clive Barker news and features at www.clivebarkercast.com. Leave comments there or get them directly into the podcast by clicking the Send Voicemail tab on the right. Please follow us on Twitter at BarkerCast or at Occupy Midian. Like us on Facebook and join the Occupy Midian Facebook group. You can listen on the site or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Libsyn, TuneIn, PocketCast, Google Play, and DoubleTwist. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Please take a couple of minutes to leave us a review on iTunes. It means the world to us and helps us spread the word about Clive Barker. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial fan site and podcast that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Films. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.